Allez le stade Toulousain So it's been another fairly busy week for rugby. It was the week in which Bill Beaumont was confirmed as our new God King Overlord once again. It was the week in which World Rugby declared it Wingers Week. It got me thinking, which wingers do you think will be best in self-isolation? My immediate thoughts, Gonzalo Camacho, former Argentina winger, always kept himself busy. Tommy Bow, because who wouldn't want to isolate with Tommy Bow? Vasily Artemyev always seemed like a great guy and who wouldn't want to hear an impassioned speech about respect right about now. Finally, I think Keith Earls always to me looked like the kind of guy who stockpiled toilet roll anyway, so might come in handy right about now. If you do have any suggestions, please send them our way. I play quite a lot of rugby on the wing and I can tell you from experience, there are a few games where I wished I had access to Netflix. However, one community that has very much found something to do was that of Barnes Rugby Club, who this weekend raised an absolutely staggering £117,000 for the NHS in memory of late club legend Gary Garrett. Over the course of a day, they were going to lift 1 million kgs between members of the club, the community, the team. And it's safe to say they absolutely smashed this. So, in order to tell me more, I was joined by Gary Sunjack, by Adam Libby, both from the club and then also friend of Barnes Rugby Club, England, Saracens and Lions hooker, Jamie George. I think the obvious question, and we just touched on it there, is how are we all doing now? How are all our arms and backs after that weekend? I was I was meant to move house yesterday and I physically oh. couldn't get out of bed till 4pm. Um, so, yeah, and then, I, I mean, I went to try and go to the toilet and it took me about five minutes mm. to just get out of bed. And then, yeah, it was one of the most painful experiences of my life. And that was, I mean, my my puny 17,000 compared to other lads. Two lads in the squad managed to do over 50,000, which, I mean, God they knows how they're feeling that. today. So 17,000, how much did we have around the World Cup, Jamie? But how much do we have then of you, Adam? Um, well, to be honest, I was pretty much strapped to the computer and the the phone mm -hmm. all day and um, trying to organise it and being repository for stupid questions and trying to talk old people through it and stuff like that. So I think I only did about 4,000. Um, but looking at the state of some boys who are texting in saying, like, literally can't move, I'm like, oh, I'm fairly glad, <laughs> really glad actually. <laughs> it's fine. You were the glue. You held the whole thing together. That's fine. Couldn't have done it without you. Uh, and then yeah, exactly. finally, I think the most impressive figure... Well, no, I mean, I didn't lift as much as Jack um, accumulatively. I did um, 12,600 in an hour. We got pretty much the entire England squad on the on like mm. a Zoom call. What was the final figure, Jack? It was like nearly 300,000 kgs. 298,000. Wow. Um, yeah, so that was, it. That was in the hour. That was a few, a few guys. So, I mean, again, like how that all came about was just carnage, like... Ben Young's message me basically just saying how like he saw the fundraiser and he wanted to help, mm. which first of all is just like so good of him because he must be yeah. getting asked to do everything at the minute. So the fact that he wanted yeah. to get involved and then he just put on the WhatsApp group straight away. We had you know nearly thirty people getting involved, which is just uh, it's brilliant really. And then again, I started off by just saying, look lads, if we could all lift three thousand kgs each, you know, ten sets of ten type thing um, to contribute, that'd be great. And then most lads stayed on for half an hour and then we had a group of probably about eight or ten of us that stayed on for the full hour so um wow. yeah it was unbelievable and then you had figures from all over the world as well you had the stuart hogg you had players that retired johnny wilkinson etc all joining as well you had all of the support flooding in kind of from nowhere kind of it all really took off in those days leading up to it as well just amazing yeah so it, it, you know the total started way before you know we we even we even got going as a, as a team so um so yeah it's incredible absolutely incredible yeah I think, I think it does just like show the the power that the rugby community has and how strong that bond is just across like the amount of respect that there is across the board and um obviously like everything's in memory of gary who was an incredible rugby man and i think everyone respected that and um wanted to do their part you know that came from you know um local rugby club level all the way up you know to barnes all the way up to international rugby and for it to be recognized in the way that it was i think was uh 
a sign of what a great man Gary was, but also, you know, gives you a huge amount of confidence in how, you know, the rugby community looks after each other. And I think that's then echoed by the sheer total you raise as well. I'll just check just before we did this with ah. gift aid. It's it's currently at 143,000 with gift aid. Wow. Which is 100, 117,000. So our modest initial target of 10,000 pounds was like, oh, I hope we make it. Um, <laughs> Just a little bit over, which is awesome. Yeah, yeah, I'd say, I'd say you've you've about hit that. And then, in total, you had over you aiming for one million lifted. You passed eight million. Um, well, we're still actually getting some in. So conservatively, I think eight million is probably um, about right. <laughs> Libs can probably um, confirm this, but I think we already we hit the a million mark about eleven thirty a.m. Do we yeah. have a clear winner? Do we have someone who's clearly in the lead, lifted the most? Then. We do, yeah. Um, his name's Greg Davis, with 51,000 something, um, wow. which is insane. I, I would say, I struggle to lift a penguin, a small penguin. That was the first object that came to mind. Um, do you have any plans then to do anything beyond that? Anything else to raise more going forward? It's almost been a, a catastrophic success um, mm. that we just want to capitalise and everyone's on a bit of a high. So we want to make sure that we keep all this good faith in the community. Yeah. And it's really captivated the imagination because it's a great man um, and a great cause. It really showed humanity and rugby at its best, I think. Yeah, yeah, fantastic. And just one final question before we, I won't keep it much longer. I wondered what kind of text do you send in the morning when your mate's playing in a World Cup final? What did I say? I think it was, I was like... Did I check? Yeah, go check, <laughs> yeah. yeah. He said, before the New Zealand game, he said, good luck to you guys, smash it. And then mm -hmm. afterwards he said, I can't speak, I need a nap. <laughs> uh, I, mean, I, I felt the same way. There's some weird messages on here, Jack, I have to say. <laughs> keep, keep, keep those to yourself, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Another team who did some group lifting was the Blues. It was something slightly lighter as they took turns to chuck about this toilet roll, which seems great and funny and hilarious until you see Carl through an Akafe's entry, at which point you just think, no, no, that poor man needs it. Let him wipe. And staying in New Zealand, the Black Ferns reunited to form the Band Firms. And I think that pun tells you everything you need to know about the song. But they clearly had a lot of fun and it's a lot of fun to listen to. And another man in New Zealand, Dan Carter, proved he can do literally everything by starting his own chat show and bringing in, as a guest, Brian Habana, who for, for some reason is still wearing that Baymax outfit from Big Hero 6, he's still doing it. He's still at, he's still at large, that's still going on. And Dan Carter now the chat show. Rugby's gone mad. Now it's time to move from one legendary back row captain to another. With the sad retirement of one Mamuko Gogodze, possibly Georgia's all-time greatest player. He played at three World Cups. He was fantastic in all of them. He captained them in 2015, where he scored two tries. The Georgian Rugby Union put together a great tribute to him. Now, Gogodze is such a legend of Georgian rugby that he's almost a synonym for Georgian rugby to a lot of people. His performances in the 2015 World Cup particularly memorable when he was their captain and he put in a famous man of the match performance against the All Blacks. I was there for that and genuinely the standing ovation at the end is one of my favourite rugby memories I've ever been through. He was an absolute legend and hero of rugby and we missed not just in Georgia but across the world. But finally, before we go, before I leave you to your own wingers week, if you, much like Hansa Hargreaves here, want to show off your skills, please use the hashtag Rugby's Got Talent. And otherwise, I'll see you next week for the next The Feed.